This is the middle of the day. This is almost noon, and the oxygen's gone. Bill Dennison studies the health of Chesapeake Bay. For troubled waters, he takes us out for a closer look at how the nation's largest estuary is doing. The color of the water here is our first symptom that things aren't right in the bay. The water's a reddish brown. It's a mahogany tide and algal bloom. And it's, it's particularly more evident from air. It's not as easy on, on the water level, but you, you know, once you start looking and you have polarized lenses, you can actually see the, the transition of the water color. We're, we're right in the middle of this bloom. So how clear is the water? I still see it, I still see it. That's right about there. That's you lose sight. The depth meter that measures water clarity goes down into the murky water about two and a half feet. A lack of water clarity and the toxins produced by the balloons are having an effect on all bay life. They will kill fish. And one of the problems that we see in the summertime with the combination of these blooms and the after effect of the blooms, which is the the settling of the, of the algae to the bottom that get decomposed by bacteria is that they consume oxygen. So if you're a fish, if you go down, it's not enough oxygen. You're down in that dead, so-called dead zone. If you come up, you're in the middle of this bloom with toxins, so you, you get squeezed. You've got nothing in between, so you run out of available habitat. Big fish, uh, the thin fish are, are most sensitive. Crabs and oysters can do a little better. They can close. You know, shellfish are a little better. The one thing that pretty much can go to the very end are worms. <laughs> worms, you know, what we end up with on the bottom are a bunch of little worms. In a deeper, slightly colder part of the bay, outside of the bloom, the water's choppy and it's a little clearer, but there are still oxygen problems. Oh no, down to 0.6 and it's still going down. So here we are in the middle of the bay and and the, and, and the oxygen is, is 0.4. When the numbers drop below one, everything dies, and it's a dead zone. This is an eroding uh, bluff. This is becoming one of the biggest uh, issues that we're starting to really wrestle with in Chesapeake Bay. For the first time recently, now the biggest source of suspended materials in the water is the shoreline, not the rivers. A lot of beach residents are trying to avert the, the, the ravages of the rising sea level by putting riprap or, or bulkhead, well, it used to be bulkheads, now it's mostly rock and, and, and all kinds of, you know, some people put spare tires and, and dump uh, uh, old pieces of road uh, concrete and rubble and stuff to try to stop, but you can't stop the sea, it's gonna, it's gonna win. We get a lot of uh, benefit from having this this ecosystem intact and look around us. We, we're you know we got marshes and and ospreys and fish and you know this is this is magic. But it's not all magic. You think there might be mud here? <laughs> I can guarantee you, 100 years ago, this was a lot deeper. So this used to be farmland and. Um, Cornfield Creek, that probably was a cornfield or somebody's lawn. And now it's sitting on the bottom of the bay and it doesn't smell good. It's, uh, it doesn't really support much life. You don't see a lot of clam shells in here. You don't see oysters. So this is our problem. And we're, you know, the, this is the dirt and associated fertilizer that should be on the fields growing crops so we can eat instead of in the bay. The other problem we're getting is lots of this uh, fine particles are coming from the, the stormwater system. And we've, we've essentially uh, buried our streams and, and turned them into culverts and storm, storm drains. And, so, and, and one of the things people often assume that water in stormwater is treated like sewage, but it's not. Stormwater goes directly into the bay efficiently. That runoff includes fine grained sediments, nutrients, and toxins. So that oxygen, it's sucking the life out of the, out of the bay. That's too low oxygen for, for uh, fish or, or even crabs. They, they can't live in that. So that's a creek, that's a, this is a beautiful little creek. This shouldn't be this way. These creeks uh, should not be low oxygen. Want me to toss it, Captain? 
You're gonna have to check your prop. This is really nice grass. After anchoring down, Dennison takes a closer look at those sea grasses. Pretty sandy. Good grass bed. There are two kinds of aquatic grasses living here. You see the, the broad leaf and then these narrow leaf guys. And they're, 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 they're struggling to get up to the surface. And the dark green color of these leaves is because there's not, there's just barely enough light for them to make it. And this is great habitat. This is where the baby crabs, this is where the peelers come, this is where the baby fish. Um, you know, the, the, this is a, a juvenile nursery for all the creatures, you know, lots of creatures in the bay. Well, the grass beds um, in, in this part of the bay are actually expanding. The grass beds in Virginia and the, the they call it eelgrass down there, the, the, the kind of grass is, is, is dwindling and that's Due to that water clarity, that murkiness problem. So, so it's a mixed bag. You can't say yes, they're doing better or worse. It, 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 very accurately, you really have to talk about where where they're doing better. They're doing better in some places, and that's one of the great success stories and cause for hope in Chesapeake Bay is is the recovery, the natural recovery of these grasses in the in the Susquehanna Flats, the Elk, the Sassafras, mm -hmm. even even in the, the Severn and the in the Magathy right here. Other areas of the Magathy and Western Shore tributaries aren't doing as well. Also doing poorly are the tributaries on the Eastern Shore. The Ray of Hope is the upper bay is, is actually better than it's been in years. Uh, there's a resurgence of of life up there. The grass is led the way, but associated with the grass is the fish and the crabs and, and the water clarity is unprecedented. Uh, it's, it's really exciting up in the upper bay. Uh, the, uh, the, the Susquehanna Flats are, are, are just teeming with life. So um, this shows that, that we can improve conditions that the, and the bay is resilient and can come back, but we need more examples of that. On the Chesapeake, Colleen Kelleher, WTOPnews.com.